Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Tesso, and I am back. I've been away for a couple of weeks because, well, I was out and about doing stuff, and I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback on this kind of this concept of estrogen, and I had a woman get upset with me on Instagram saying that estrogen is what caused her breast cancer. And, you know, when somebody has cancer, I don't really want to sit there and argue with them because they feel like that's what caused their cancer. If estrogen caused it, then why didn't they get it when they were 20? Or why didn't they get it when they were 30 or 40? So you would think that if estrogen caused cancer, then women would have an increased risk of cancer when they had most estrogen in their body, which would be in their 20s or 30s. I mean, that would make sense to me. If estrogen caused cancer, then why wouldn't every woman get cancer? And it's be and the reason they don't is because cancer is a multifaceted disease process. It's not just one thing. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a lady come in today who is a breast cancer survivor of five years, and she's on letrozole, which is blocking her estrogen receptor because they don't want her on estrogen because her cancer cell was estrogen receptor positive, as was progesterone receptor positive. So that's not causation, though. That means she has a cancer cell that has an estrogen receptor on it. And most of the breast tissue already does have estrogen receptors on it. So therefore, it's not necessarily causative, but it can be proliferative, meaning that it can proliferate those cells if I gave you estrogen and you were in menopause. But that, that's different than cause. So unfortunately, this woman was really upset with me for saying this, but we have studies, and most notably a study that came out about three and a half months ago, that said women over the age of 65 have decreased rates that are on estradiol, have decreased rates of breast, colon, lung cancers. They also had decreased rates of dementia. They had decreased rates of... Um, morbidity and mortality. So they lived longer, they had less dementia, and they had less risk of breast cancer. So it almost seems as though cancer protective qualities to estradiol. So why are women afraid of it? Why are women afraid of estrogen when for decades, it has been pounded into their heads that estrogen causes cancer? Because we had a horrible study come out about 2006 ish, called the Women's Health Initiative. And it scared everybody, not just women, but men and doctors away from hormone replacement. And it has taken almost an entire generation to overcome that. And I would say we still have tons of work to do because there are still daily, five, six times a day, I have a patient come in who says her doctor won't prescribe estrogen because she's either over the age of 60 or 65, it's a moving target, or they don't think that she should be because of the increased risks. The risks outweigh the benefits. So what are the benefits? The benefits are decreased osteoporosis, increased good cholesterol, decreased bad cholesterol, as I've said, decreased rates of dementia, um, decreased rates of death, um, decreased rates of colon cancer, lung cancer. The colon cancer finding was actually repeated in the Women's Health Initiative, but you didn't really hear that 16 years ago, that the women in the study had a 50% decrease in the rates of colon cancer. Didn't hear about that because, well, it wasn't as scary. So let's suffice it to say, let's put this to bed once and for all. The risks are outweighed by the benefits to hormone replacement in women. Now, I'm saying this as a generalization. Obviously, in this lady that I saw that has an estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, the risks are probably there that I could fuel a cancer cell. But it's also beneficial for her because it prevents osteoporosis and brain fog and some other things. So we have to have that talk. We have to do that dance where we talk about the risks and the benefits, but ultimately she should be able to make up her mind based on solid evidence, solid data, and not fear. And doctors should practice without fear because it shouldn't be something that is feared. We have many medications 
that can kill you. Tylenol. If you took enough Tylenol, you would die. You would have liver failure and you would die. And it would be a horrible, agonizing death. But people reach for Tylenol all the time. Motrin. Take enough of that, you'll crush your kidneys. We take it all the time. We don't fear it. Why is there this inherent fear in estrogen? And it's probably partially because of the misogyny that is in medicine today. We treat women like second-class citizens. We don't value their pain. We don't value their discomfort. And I think it's a way for doctors to get women out of their offices when they have other things to do. If you put the fear of God into someone and say, well, that's going to cause cancer, they're going to leave your office. I'm 72 years old. I want to start HRT. Is it too late? I would say this. It's never too late to have the discussion with your healthcare provider. Since I've been posting on YouTube, I have seen an enormous number of women over the age of 60, most of them being over the age of 65, that want to go on HRT. And that's a discussion that we have. What are the risks? What are the benefits? The risks to women in the age of 72, if you've never had a car calcium artery score, I would tell you to get what's called a CAC. You can go to heart hospital in your town and get these for about $100. It's a CAT scan of your heart and it looks at the blood vessels in your heart to see if there's any calcified plaques in there. The risk to women who haven't been on estrogen for about 10 years is that they can have a softening of those calcified plaques, which would then also potentially break those plaques off, causing a heart attack. Now, estrogen also helps the pliability of the blood vessels and can help with blood pressure. It lowers bad cholesterol. It raises good cholesterol. So there's also can, um, heart disease protective qualities to estradiol. So we have to have that discussion. And it's not something where you should just be told, no, can't do it. Because maybe you want to do it. Maybe you feel miserable. Maybe you have osteoporosis or better yet, osteopenia, and you want to be proactive and you want to help your bones because estradiol will indeed protect you from bone loss. So it's one of those things. It should never be an all or none. You should have that discussion and you should feel like you want to have that discussion. You shouldn't be afraid to bring that question up with your physician for fear of being shot down. Estrogen overall is a very, very helpful hormone for women of any age group from their 20s to their 30s and 40s. You wouldn't be able to maintain a pregnancy. You wouldn't have fertility if it wasn't for estrogen. Why all of a sudden at 50, you become afraid of a hormone that you have in your body your entire life, starting at about age nine to 10. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me that you would be afraid of that. But I think the fear has come from us as medical professionals. Remember, you can ask questions at any time. I'll try to answer those. I like to keep these going for about another two to five minutes. We're talking about the safety of estradiol and the fact that it prevents breast, colon, and ovarian cancer. It can actually lower ris risks. It can lower the risks of dementia and morbidity, meaning disease processes. It helps with muscle pain. It helps with joint pain, helps with skin. You know, you're being bombarded with all of these um, um, ads about topical hell. You're probably going to get one even here for topical estrogen because it helps your skin. If your estrogen levels are fine, you don't need any of that garbage. Now, if you're in menopause and you don't have estrogen, then you may want to be on a topical estradiol for your face because it can help. But if you have adequate circulating estrogen, you don't need that garbage. Been on estrogen since April. Feel better than I have in years. Thank you, Dr. T. See, this is what I'm talking about. Sandy is a great example. Thank you so much, Sandy. She reached out to me, didn't have estrogen, was feeling miserable. Put her on estrogen. She's felt better than she has in years. Now, the question that I would have for you, if you're in Sandy's boat, is why, why do we make women feel like they should just suffer just a little bit? You know, like you should suffer just a little bit because, well, ah, in the Garden of Eden, you ate that darned apple and you've been punished ever since. That's why. I mean, literally, that's why we keep women down because of 
things because of old stories, old narratives that just, you know, that women need to be basically left behind or they're second class citizens when that's not the case at all, obviously. I mean, we're all equal and you're suffering. You should have options and you do. My point is you have options. Remember questions, please leave them. I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so I know there aren't as many people watching because I haven't been bombarding you with lives, but I'm back. And for the next three weeks, I'm going to do this every day. We're going to get those questions out there. We're going to get you. I would say this to you. If you are in menopause, you are struggling, and you don't know what to do because nobody will help you, call me. Just give me a call. 512-956-0296. I don't take insurance. I'm licensed in about 34 states, including the bigs, New York, California, Florida, and Texas. Um, Pennsylvania is coming. But what's happening is you're not getting helped and you need to be helped. I was watching a video about taking vitamin D3 and K2 as a means of removing plaques from arteries. No, that's not going to help. Um, if we knew what would do that, we would be doing it. Um, there is a medication that is on the horizon that's going to be an anal application. I know that sounds horrible. That actually can dissolve arterial plaques. There's a supplement out there called Arteriosil, Arteriosil, and that can actually um, help with plaques over time. Um, I've been taking it for a couple of years because I had a calcium score that was barely elevated, but kind of made me think like, hey, I got to get on this now. Um, so Arteriosil, Vascanox, um, but vitamin D is not going to do it. Can we take progesterone only? Does it have to be in conjunction? No, you can take progesterone alone. Is transdermal HRT safer for migraine sufferers? Safer in the sense, so what you're talking about with migraines is not hormone replacement, it's birth control pills. You can't use birth control pills if you have migraines with aura. If you don't have an aura, you can use birth control pills. It doesn't apply to HRT, it only applies to birth control pills because of ethanol estradiol, which is a very powerful estrogen knockoff. Estradiol, plain old estradiol is not gonna it's not contraindicated in people with migraines. Transdermal, oral, sublingual, however you want to take it, it's not contraindicated. It's contraindicated in women that um, have a migraine with an aura that are the contemplating birth control pills. Um, so that's definitely something that you should have a conversation with your provider. I mean, that's what I would tell my patients, but I, you know, you're a lawyer, so I got to be careful, right? Um, but yeah, make sure you talk about that with your doctor because technically it's not a contraindication. There are very few contraindications to estradiol. Obviously, even a breast cancer survivor may consider taking estrogen, especially if she's more than five years out from her diagnosis and she's cancer free and she's really suffering. That 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 is even a contra not a contraindication. Women that have a history of blood clotting disorders um, can use topical estrogen instead of oral. Is morning the best time to apply estradiol? It depends on you. I have some patients who put it on at night because they have night sweats and it wakes them up. They hot flash during the evening and they don't like it, so they put the estrogen on at night. Um, there's really, it's there is no, again, absolute. You can do what you want with that hormone and take it when it's best for you. Are those plaque meds safer than stents? I'm not a cardiologist. I would recommend following Joel Kahn uh, on Instagram. He's a vegan, which I am not, but he does have a lot of good information out there. Um, those aren't medications that I talked about. The Arteriosil and Vascanox are supplements. Um, the jury's still out. They're very expensive. Each of those bottles is 50 to a hundred dollars a month. So it's not cheap stuff, but I've been on it for a couple of years. Um, and it, uh, I'm going to get retested here in a week, so we'll see what happens. Fingers are crossed that my calcium score went down to zero from 20. Um, so that being said, any other questions? We're hitting the 14-minute mark, and I don't want to overstay my welcome. I will be here again tomorrow. Also, throw out some ideas. If you have things you want me to talk about, throw them in the comments. I'm more than happy to do that. Like, subscribe, share. It obviously gets the message out. We get more women. I can't tell you how many women... I have seen because you all share videos. It's like blowing my mind. Um, it's so heartwarming and 
makes me feel so good that you think that the message is good enough to share and these women are finding help and they're finding happiness. So you recently prescribed MP thyroid med for me. Why do you choose that one? Um, because NP thyroid has both thyroid hormones. It has T3 active and T4 storage. Most women that go on thyroid medications are on levothyroxine, which is T4, which is purely a storage form of the hormone. You have to convert that to T3 in the periphery of your bloodstream, and some women don't convert. So the ratio is about 80% T4 to 20% T3. So I kind of look at it like levothyroxine is money in the bank. I could give you $100,000, but if you can't spend any of it, that's levothyroxine, that's Synthroid. If I give you NP thyroid, I'm giving you the $100,000, but I'm also giving you spending money at the same time. So it has both. It has both the power of the active hormone and the storage hormone, and I just think it's more bang for the buck. That's just me and my opinion. Um, thank you for all your information. You're very welcome. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out to hang out with me, and I will... Talk to you all tomorrow.